from Caterpillars to Butterflies, Episode 9, Grit, What It Is, Why You Don't Have It, and Why You Need It. Welcome to the From Caterpillars to Butterflies Personal Growth Podcast. Just like the caterpillar is destined to become a butterfly, you too are designed for a beautiful transformation. This is where you go to grow and transform your life. And now, here's your host, Certified Life Coach, Charlene Dior. Hi there, and welcome to the From Caterpillars to Butterflies podcast. I am Charlene, your host, and today we're talking about grit. We're talking about what it is, why you don't have it, and why you need it. So you may be familiar with Angela Duckworth. She wrote the bestseller Grit, The Power of Passion and Perseverance, and it details a lot of research. It's a really great read on grit and what makes it up and how it it is more of a determinant of success than even talent. And so I wanted to just dedicate this episode to grit and talk to you about it and also to give you some of, some of my own findings of why it is that a lot of people don't have grit. So Angela describes it as a combination of passion and perseverance. And she even goes further to define four different elements of grit. Uh, The first being passion and interest. So it's, um, you know, being, it's kind of when people say, I love my job, right? And it's also the acknowledgement that I don't like every single piece of my job. There are some tasks that I don't enjoy doing, but as a whole, I really enjoy this. I'm really passionate and interested about this. The other part is perseverance. It is having a daily discipline, a commitment to growing and mastering something, Purpose, the third element is the conviction that your work matters. So if you don't believe that what you're doing matters, you're going to have a hard time staying focused on it. And then lastly, she talks about hope and hope is being able to keep going in spite of your own self doubt, in spite of the odds and um, whatever minor setbacks you come up against. And so that's kind of her definition of grit. And there's a grit scale where they ask questions to measure your level of grit, your level of passion and perseverance. So perseverance being, I finish what I start, I overcome setbacks, passion being statements such as, you know, my interests change year to year, or I am obsessed with things for a short amount of time, but then I later lose interest. And those questionnaires can help you determine your own grit level. You can access Angela's Grit Scale at her website, angeladuckworth.com slash grit dash scale. And I'll also have that link for you in the show notes. So I wanted to talk a little bit about grit, though, from my own perspective. Um, The book is a really great read, so you should definitely read it. But here's what I see happening. And Angela talks about grit a lot from the perspective of Our adolescents, extracurricular activities in school, she talks about, you know, ballet and dance classes and sports and the cadets at the military. So it's really shaping, our our, our grit is shaped from a young age. But I also want to talk about my experience with grit as an adult, as a 30-something year old woman. Um, So, you know, when I first decided to get started in real estate investing and I was like wanting to learn all that I could. And I was going to events to, to meet people and to learn and to network. And at one of the events, they told a story about a man who got started in real estate investing. And six months later, he was a millionaire. Now he was an asset millionaire, meaning that his assets were worth a million dollars, not that he had a million dollars of equity or cash flow. But you can see how that could excite people oh, I could be a millionaire in six months. That sounds exciting. Yes, sign me up for your coaching, please. But what they didn't tell you is that that man um, had a pizza parlor. He owned a pizza parlor and he sold it and he took the cash from the gain to buy real estate. And there's no telling how long he had that pizza parlor. He, there's no telling how long he worked towards it. There's no telling if it was something that was in, inherited by him. or You don't know the whole situation around how he got that pizza parlor. And you 
if you don't have a pizza parlor to sell, <laughs> you understand, then you probably aren't going to get those same results that he got. I worked with a business coach once and uh, she had this program that was geared towards helping you leave your job in a year. And I asked her, so tell me how many of your clients have taken your program and actually left their job? And her answer was, oh, one of my clients left their job just last week. There's a difference between leaving your job because you have replaced your income and leaving your job because you and your husband sat down and talked about it or because you were laid off or because you retired or because of a whole host of things. You took a sabbatical, who knows what, right? A part of the reason why people don't have grit, in my opinion, particularly in a business sense, and maybe even in in other senses as well, but it's because no one tells you that you have to have it. What people tell you is the sexy story that gets you excited. They don't tell you what you really need in order to have what you want. They downplay the progress and the dreams, or they tell you the 1% success story. And it's not their fault completely. A part of the reason why no one tells you what you need is because you don't want to hear it. Right. If I said to you, I could help you be a millionaire and you can travel the world, you can leave a legacy behind for your children and your children's children, and you can live the life that you've always imagined. Who's in? Raise your hand. And you all would be be raising your hand. Yes, I'm in. I'm in all the way. And if I said, great, let's get started. But let me tell you, it's going to take five to 10 years. Be ready to put some work in for five to 10 years. What most of you are gonna say is, okay, great, you know, I'm still in it, I'm still interested, I'm, I'm committed, but let me wait until my kids finish school. I mean, they're almost about to graduate, and so let me just do that first. Or let me just, you know, pay down some debt first. Let me just go on this vacation. I got a vacation planned for Europe next summer. Let me just get that out the way first, and then I'm ready. Because we can't see five to 10 years into the future. We can see six months into the future. We can see one year into the future, but we can't see that far, five, 10, 20 years into the future. We have very short-sighted vision. And a part of the reason why people tell you the sexy story is because that's the story that's going to make you take action. And it's the double-edged sword because that's also the story that's going to make you give up. Because when I was in that coaching program and I realized I was not leaving my job anytime soon, I put myself on the bench. I was like, let me just chill out, just blog, do some other things. And just, you know, I parked myself when I realized that that was not doable. So that is the double edged sword. It gets you started, but it also makes you quit short of your goal. And we have to learn how to see further in order to have grit. And I talked about that in a previous podcast on expanding your vision. You have to learn how to see further into the future in order to have grit. And it's so important for you to know this because if you don't know, if you're not prepared for the journey, you're not going to make it. It's like someone saying, Charlene, how do I get from Houston to Florida? And I could tell you, okay, you get on I-10, it's a straight shot, just a few hours. And you get in your car and you try to go from Houston to Florida and it's not just a few hours and it might not even be a straight shot. You're not prepared for the journey. You might not have the the amount of gas to get there. You might need to, uh, to stay in a hotel depending on what part of Florida you're going to. If you're, you know, it took me 10 hours to get from Tallahassee, Florida to Houston. But if you wanted to go like deep Florida, like Miami, you might need to spend the night somewhere and pick up the next day. And you might not have enough money and enough gas to get you there because I didn't tell you the whole story. So I want you to know what it takes so that when you embark on this life that you really want to have, you're prepared for the journey. That you have enough gas in your gas tank you have enough grit, you have enough perseverance, you have enough prayer and inspiration and fuel to keep you going. Because most people think accomplishing your dream is like going two blocks up the road 
turn left, go up one stoplight, and the dream is on the right. And a lot of people will tell you that that's where it's at. A lot of people will say, hey, I'm going to tell you where your go- where your dream is at. It's two blocks up the street, turn left, go up one stoplight, and it's on the right. And you'll go there, and you won't see the vision. You won't see the dream. And so you'll just think, maybe I got it wrong. Maybe I missed the direction, I missed the step. And so you'll go wandering around. And then you'll see a parking lot and there'll be a lot of people in the parking lot. And you'll think, oh, someone over there in that parking lot has got to know where my dream is at. So you're going to go to the parking lot and you're going to pull up and you're going to say, hey, I'm trying to find my dream. I can't find it. My coach told me it was two blocks up the street, turn left, go to the next stoplight, turn right. It would be there. It's not there. Can you help me? And they're going to say, dude, there is no dream. You see all these cars here? You see all these people hanging out here in the parking lot? If there was a dream, they wouldn't all be here. But they're all here because they're thinking the same thing that you're thinking. They were told the same thing that you were told. It's a lie. Just relax. Kick your feet up. Have some beer and some pizza. Watch the movie on the on the big screen. Nothing else is out there for you. This is as good as it gets. And most people will say, you know what, you're right. I've been wandering around trying to find this dream and I really could just use a beer. (laughs) Let me just chill out here. And a very few people will say, hey, I hear you. I hear you. But I just can't help shake the feeling that the dream is out there somewhere. And they will turn out the parking lot and they'll keep on going, looking for the dream. And then they'll wander around some more, those few And then they'll come against another parking lot and they'll say someone in there has got to know where the dream is. Someone's got to know all those people over there. And they'll pull over into that parking lot and they'll say, hey, guys, I'm trying to find my vision. I'm trying to find my dream. I was told it was around here somewhere. Can you point me in the right direction? And they're going to say, hey. You're so funny. You're funny. What dream? What dream? Get off your high horse. Get out of your head. Get out of the clouds. Look at all these people here. You think if there was a dream out there, all these people would be in here in the parking lot drinking margaritas, eating popcorn? You're so funny. You dreamers are so funny, man. Nothing else is out there for you. Just sit down, watch a movie on the big screen, have a margarita and some popcorn, kick your feet up. Everyone here is having fun. Look at everybody laughing and joking. You go out there, you're going to get lost. You're going to get stuck. You're going to be on the side of the road with no gas. You're going to be lonely. Just chill here. It doesn't exist, man. It doesn't exist. And again, most people will say, you know what? I'm going to just take a break. I'm just going to have one margarita, a handful of popcorn. And after that, I'm going to start finding my dream again. And those breaks end up lasting for years or indefinitely. And again, there will be a slight few who will say, ah, what you're saying makes sense. There are a lot of people here. They seem to be having fun. I I could enjoy a margarita, but I just can't shake this feeling. I just can't shake the feeling that my dream is out there somewhere and I wouldn't be able to live with myself if I didn't go out and try. That's what it's like (laughs) trying to accomplish any great feat. It is further than what you think it is. And there are a lot of people that have parked in a parking lot on the side of the road, who've given up, who have convinced themselves that there's nothing out there. And they have surrounded themselves with other people who are also convinced that there's nothing out there. And so everybody's telling you that there's nothing out there. And that also affects the vision, the grit, the the tenacity to make it. But what it really looks like, what it really looks like, and look, I'm on the journey too. 
I haven't made it. I'm on the journey too. But what it really looks like is that it's not two blocks up the street, turn to the left and go up to the next stoplight and it's on the right. No, it's like go two blocks up the street, turn to the right, go up to the next stoplight, turn left and then go all the way down that street, go all the way down and go down until you can't go anymore. You're going to have to go right or left. Now, I don't know which way you should go. I can't tell you which way to take it, but you're going to have to go right or left, make a decision, go stick with it. No matter which way you go, you're going to go down another long road and you're going to end up in a valley. You're going to end up going way down, down into a valley. It's going to get dark down there. You're going to be alone. You're going to be scared. You're going to be hearing weird things at night (laughs) when you're down in that valley and you're going to want to stop there. But keep going through the valley. Keep going through the valley. And then you're going to come out the valley. If you stick with it, you're going to come out and you're going to go down another another long road. And then you'll get to the end of the road and you'll realize you're lost. Take a U-turn. U-turn, come back around the other way. And then take a right. And then if you keep going and keep going and keep going, you're going to come to the base of the mountain. Start going up the mountain. And then at some point... When you're going up the mountain, you're going to realize that you can't go with your car anymore. You're going to have to get out and hike it up the rest of the way. And you're going to keep going and keep going and keep going. And you're going to find some people that are there on the mountain. They haven't reached the top, but they're just on the mountain. They've settled somewhere along the way. And you'll be tempted to settle too. You might hear some more people telling you that there's no, that no one has made it to the top. This is as far as you can go. Don't listen to them. Keep hiking your way up and up and up the top of the mountain. And when you get to the top, you will look around at your accomplishment. You will feel a sense of confidence and pride that no one can take away from you. And you will also notice other mountains that you can also climb. That's what it really looks like accomplishing your goal. I recently gave some wisdom uh, to um, Quanisha Smith of um, blackwomenrise.com. She was looking to prepare a book or guide for black women entrepreneurs. And my advice, my wisdom was, don't worry about how long it takes. If there is a space in the world that you see and that you know that you can fill that space, it doesn't matter how long it's going to take. Stop holding yourself hostage to a timeline. What if Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, this is taking too long. I give up. Right? What if there were cancer researchers and doctors who said, this is hopeless. I give up. That would be crazy, right? And we wouldn't have so many other things that we have today. So a part of having grit is just deciding that you're not going to give up and that you're not going to hold your dreams hostage to a timeline that someone made up for you or that you made up for yourself. Forget the timeline. Fill the space in your life, in your heart, in your community, in your industry. Fill the space in the world that needs to be filled. And don't let it matter how long it takes. So that's my take on grit. I think that you don't have grit because people don't tell you that you have grit. They don't tell you that you need grit. People don't tell you that you need it because if they told you, (laughs) you wouldn't be as motivated to to go and stick it out. You would find excuses and reasons to wait until the time was just right. We are too, we are too obsessed with time. (laughs) Forget time. So I wanted to end with some of the, the recommendations that Angela Duckworth has in her book. So she talks about the hard thing rule, which is something that her and her family do. And it has three parts. One is that Uh, You know, you have a daily deliberate practice towards the hard thing. You're committed to it every single day. The second part is that you can only quit when there's a natural quitting point, a natural stopping point. So for her children who might have signed up for 
some sports at school, they can only quit when the season's over. They're not allowed to quit because they had a hard day or because they had to make a sacrifice and they couldn't spend the night with their friends. They can only quit at a natural stopping point. And that's why I think New Year's resolutions and goals are really powerful and valuable. A lot of people are so against them, but it's a natural starting point and it's a natural stopping point. And so building your next iteration of goals and dreams around that natural starting and stopping point is advantageous to you because I'm not quitting until the year's over with, right? If, and if we are committed enough to, to stay focused long enough. This part reminds me of something I read in the book, Three Feet from Gold. It, they advise you to never st- make a major decision in a valley. So it's kind of saying the same thing. You don't quit when you've had a bad day. You don't make a major decision when something bad has happened when you're in a valley. You quit at a natural stopping point. You make key decisions in your life and in your business from a a high point, not a low point. And it's similar to what I talked about a few episodes ago about your frequency. You don't make a decision in your life based off of a a panicked frequency, you make it based off of your dreams and your goals and where you want to be in the future. So all these things kind of relate and connect to each other. Um, The third thing, the third component of the hard thing rule is that you pick the hard thing. So no one else can pick for you what you're going after. You decide what the hard thing is. And the last thing is that you commit for at least two years, which again, you know, if you're committed to losing weight, you know, and you say in January, I'm going to commit to lose weight and, you, and you're not going to stop until there's a natural stopping point. You're not going to stop because it's someone's birthday party. You're not going to stop because it's, you know, Cinco de Mayo. You're going to stop committing, committing. You're going to stop being committed to the goal when there's a natural, only when there's a natural stopping point. And maybe even never, but at least at the end of the natural stopping point. It's not, I'm stopping when I feel inconvenienced. And so committing for a time frame is a good way to do that. One year, two years is what Angela Duckworth said for her children. And I say, depending on what you're doing, right? When I went to college, I knew that it was a commitment of at least four years. And I wasn't like a semester in thinking, man, I'm wasting my money here. I'm wasting my time here. No, I knew that I was in it for at least four years. And so when you're starting off on something, commit to at least a certain amount of time, depending on what the goal is. If it's a weight loss goal, depending on how much you have to lose, I think one year is is great. You know, if it's a starting a business, then give yourself at least four years, <laughs> the same way that you would give if you were starting a career in any other field, right? You would give yourself at least four years to get a degree first. Give yourself a time frame that is in alignment with whatever the goal is. And the, the last thing that I will say in terms of having grit, learn to have high standards for yourself. We tend to have very high standards for other people. And we tend to criticize them and give them a hard time. We tend to blame them. Um, and, you know, have you ever listen to someone complain about someone for doing something that you know that they do themselves because we're harder on other people than we're hard than we are on ourselves learn to have just as high standards for yourself as you have for everyone else and when you have high standards for yourself then you can't help but to follow through on your commitments. You can't help but to stay committed to the journey. You can't help but to not end up in the parking lot because you probably talk about other people who are in the parking lot right now. I bet that you can think of someone that you know in your life who you're thinking that they gave up on something, they played themselves short, they parked in the parking lot and you probably talking bad about them. But there are probably some areas in your life where you've parked in the parking lot as well. So learn to have a high standard for yourself as you have for everyone else. And that is how you have grit. And of course, make sure that you're going towards the things that you're interested in, that you're passionate about, that no one else is defining these things for you, but you're defining them for yourself from your real self. 
which is why it's important to know yourself, to know that what you're pursuing is the real you and not who you think you need to be and not who you think your mama wants you to be, but it's the real you. You're committed and you're in it for the long haul because you have a high standard for yourself. And now a moment of meditation. If you're not driving, cooking, or doing anything that requires your full attention, take a deep breath and close your eyes as Charlene leads you into an inspiring meditation. Take another deep breath. And continue to breathe. And with each inhale, breathe in a spirit of tenacity and perseverance. Allow that spirit to permeate your entire body. Feel the tenacity and perseverance flow to your heart. Feel the tenacity and the perseverance flow to your mind. Feel it as it flows down to your hands. Your hands hold your dreams. And your two hands are filled with all the tenacity and the perseverance that you need to hold those goals. Continue to breathe in more perseverance, more tenacity. Feel it continue to take over and flow through your entire body. Feel that tenacity and perseverance in your feet. Your feet will carry you on the journey. And now your two feet are filled with all the tenacity and all the perseverance that you need to walk your journey. Breathe in more perseverance, more of a spirit and attitude of stickability. Continue to breathe it in. Continue to feel it throughout your entire body. Your heart and mind have the spirit a perseverance. You're in it to win it. Feel a perseverance. See yourself going after every one of your goals without stopping. Feel the tenacity. Feel the grit. On the count of three, I want you to open your eyes, feeling full of grit and perseverance. One, two, three. Open your eyes, knowing that you are now full of a spirit of tenacity and perseverance and that you're the type of person that goes after what you want and sticks with it until you've achieved it. Until next time, grow on purpose. Thanks for listening to the From Caterpillars to Butterflies podcast, your one-stop shop for all things personal growth. For today's show notes and even more tools and resources to help you transform the life you have into the life you love, go to www.fromcaterpillars2butterflies.com.